Marina Bordina, Natalia Grubenikova, and Alexander Litvinov from Moscow Mokohanga team present a short study of experimental course we call Mokohanga in Russian, and the series of five prints at the slide represent a collective work we will tell you about. And surely we, we couldn't just stop with those strict pictures, so we had some funny experiments as well. We are the Mokohanga fan community involving art students, print techniques and wood carving fans. Normally we carry out an introductory course from 20 to 30 hours long, then students continue as individual practitioners. The course is attended by Mokohangers with different experience, from newbies to experienced members. One class is normally three hours long, sometimes it can be as long as six hours. There are very few Mokohanga fans in Russia, and before we began our courses in 2016, there were no Japanese basi paper, wood blocks, and tool supply. Surely last two years of pandemic limited all traveling, which was our best way to bring tools from Japan. This is why we always combine traditional materials with those tools and materials available in Russia. Thus, we had a task to develop a short course combining attendees with different experience, providing tasks to rapidly develop basic carving and printing skills, suggesting a format interesting and challenging, fitting to both beginners and advanced students, using individual experience and creativity of students, providing them with opportunity to participate in collective art project. Mokohanga is a very promising technique for teaching students, since it combines both wood carving and general techniques of engraving and printing. We appreciate using safe and non-toxic materials and applying no complex equipment. The ability to do artwork with own hands, with no help of computers or machines, becomes a rare occurrence and therefore it's really pleasant for many students fully engaged in modern digital world. We combine widely available local tools and materials, carving knives and chisels, lime wood blocks, as well as local carving techniques with Japanese classical techniques. Practicing Mokohanga helps even novice students to work deliberately with sketches and drawings, improve carving skills and deep understand the principles of composition. And our first aspiration is the following. We have noticed that the idea to combine blocks from different authors is very inspiring for students, stimulating the desire to experiment and act as a team. This approach allows people with different drawing and carving skills to participate in a final work with fantasy and courage, combining applied art, folk craft, comp con contemporary graphics and printmaking. Mokohanga is not taught in Russia at art schools, but there are an interest from students and therefore attempts to create woodblock prints. At the slide you can see a very fresh example from High School of Economics University in Moscow, its art and design division. Lime wood blocks were used and it was pressed with a tablespoon and potato starch based wallpaper glue was used instead of nori and regular watercolor paper. The technique reminds works of Katsu Yasa. The author, Dari Golovkova, has chosen the technique of water-based prints on purpose to discover the idea of memories based on old diapositives. One cannot approach the prints too close since the picture crashes into pieces, so spectators must keep a distance from printed memories. Watercolor helps to provide with vivid and fluid prints looking different from each other. Last year, actually when originally the conference has been planned, we celebrated a 100-year anniversary of Futamas school. Futamas is a similar phenomenon to German Bauhaus and it laid a foundation for well-known Soviet avant-garde. Futamas ideas are broadly used for art education in Russia. During our project, we have focused on the ideas related to experiments with materials and introduction of individual skills in the collective art project. Chip carving, which is called geometrical in Russia, is a Russian traditional art appeared in the 13th 15th century. Chip carving is used for furniture and houseware. Only one type of knife is used. It reminds a bigger Hangita knife, which is called Kasyak in Russian. 
at the right picture you can see a spinning wheel decorated with carving. There are a few basic shapes built by combining bricks and cards. The shapes are normally triangular, straight, or rounded, or tetragonal. Those simple shapes combined with each other to form magnificent ornaments. There are two practical reasons to form our future chain link fencing with geometrical carving. First, opposite to cherry wood, it's nearly impossible to carve thin lines on lime wood, especially cross grain. And they, since the ornament is built by regular pyramids, it's much more stable than irregular wavy lines. Second, we have very limited time for wood carving exercises. Simply speaking, it is not enough to settle the skill. Our ornaments, due to numerous repetitions of simple cards, help students to better memorize such basic carving skills as handling a knife, making an accurate card with desired angle, and what is critically important for lime wood for following the right grain directions. Surely such ornaments can be very simple for beginners and extremely detailed for advanced students. It makes a huge difference if you cut one centimeter or half a centimeter triangle. The second type of ornament we used is called Kudrinska carving. It originally appeared in 19th century in a Bramsova craftsman village in Moscow region. Its patterns made of rhythmic vegetal ornaments covered various houseware as dishes, salt cellars, decorated boxes. Main elements are stylized leaves, branches, flowers, and even mystical creatures. Traditionally, the carving is done with yew chisel, komasuki, and flat chisel, aisuki. It is very visible at the right bottom corner of the cutting board, but it can be properly cut with universal carving knives or 3mm wide hangito. And it became our third inspiration, opposite to chip carving with straight lines, wavy lines required to change the direction of the cut to stay with the grain of lime, lime wood, and in order not to break fine details. Such struggle with the grain, numerous rotation of the block, handling with care rather fragile hangito, made students set the stable skill and master the carving. Similarly to chip carving, Kudrinska carving can be simplified to complicated by the element size, as well as keeping the inner part of the rounded leaves or extracting them. At the slide, you can see two blocks with more and less detailed carving and the prints thereof. The more dense block was imitating the fence at our prints and the less detailed block imitated background plants. It is worth noting that using lime wood block was an advantage in the particular case, and plywood could have caused issues with deep cuts due to alternating veneer layers. We set the rules for the group work about block structure and number of blocks. We used traditional carving elements and we left some time for experiments and artistic prints. Our task was to check for future students if the course is feasible and what are the limitations and what are the discoveries on the way. Due to the pandemic, we have limited the number of participants by three artists. This is a long text describing the schedule of our course, which is actually a very logical one, starting from the sketch planning and composition discussion, then carving printing, and finally experiments and binding a book. Those five prints look very close to what was planned on sketches. Each of them has a size of 12 centimeters per 20 centimeters and it is evident here how the compositions were organized with the help of the fence which actually separated the foreground from the second stage. We chose summer house as the main subject for the series. It reminded us summer vacations and our childhood. Dacha, similarly to, to the word Sputnik, is a very well-known Russian word internationally, which means actually a small land plot, normally 600 square meters, and a summer house there. The house is often self-built, and that surely influences the shapes a lot, and we'll talk about that later. Nearly half of Russians spend their every summer weekend at Dacha. It is a very traditional way to organize weekends and vacations. The pandemic activated Dutch life since it became the best place to hide from infected urban areas, despite villages were less organized for home offices. We tried to mention all elements of the typical Russian Dutchess, including houses with veranda, gardens, water tower, dovecote, and garage. 
Sumi Inc. provided us with an opportunity to imitate black and white old pictures, and combining blocks generated dozens of pictures with a very different and at the same time having so much in common as real duchess when one passes them along. They look very recognizable for Russian eye, and we remember those views as they have been built by our parents and grandparents. We have tried to fulfill our prints with Russian flavor using traditional carving designs and as well as architecture patterns of villages and summer houses surrounded by a landscape. We believe visiting such villages can be really interesting for travelers. It will help them to find out much more Russian character and way of living than a stay in city centers. Decorated outer window frames are called nalichniki in Russian language. They used to be an important differentiator between village houses in terms of owner creativity, wealth, and disposition to accuracy and design. The fence which helped us to organize the composition can be a separate research topic, since it is an indispensable part of every garden. And looking at the shape of, of the fence, one can say the age of it. Wooden lath fence belongs to 60s, 70s, and the steel chain link fencing belongs to 80s and 90s. As we mentioned before, experiments with combining blocks, floating canto, bigger paper formats, and even folding the paper were very inspiring for us. We mentioned that Dutch houses are often self-built and they have verandas. And the veranda is often built later due to economical reasons and it makes the shape of the roof very broken. And verandas are participating in active life during summer and they are empty in winter, keeping the cold air from getting directly to the house. It might be strange to mention that, but Mokuhanga has never been designed for Russian landscape. We viewed numerous Bakasi gradients at the Fuji mountain prints, at classical Japanese prints. But it was quite a creative task to find textures and color intensity for local gardens, buildings, and even sky. These are experiments with folding paper. It requires some fantasy to keep the white frame intact. Spectators have a chance to imagine either rainy weather or own memories about summer stay at the house of your friends or relatives of us driving along the village streets, although not all Dutch roads would allow that. Numerous experimental prints allowed us to bind together a mini accordion book which reminds a small table folding screen. Moving along pages may remind a real walk along a Dutch street. At this slide you can see the book printed from block combination on the paper format which is twice bigger than original sketches and blocks. It was made in a more proper way for the traditional Orihon type book. And that's the conclusion slide. We tested the very intensive course for future students and we are very happy with the result. And the most valuable finding is how we worked as a group. Different skill sets were complementing each other while the individual ideas and artistic preferences were not lost during the process. And as you can see at the slide, we definitely got regular prints and experimental prints as well as books. The research we have presented during the lecture was carried out by three members of Mo Moscow Mokuhanga community, Marina Bardina, Natalia Grebenikova and Alexander Litvinov. We hope that we'll share this experience with future students during master classes in Moscow and wherever requested. You can see Marina's email next to her name. Please feel free to get in contact with us. We'll be really happy to collaborate as well as to answer all your questions. And surely thanks a lot for your kind attention.